In the last video, I talked about how Einstein's theory could explain qualitatively the photoelectric effect. Now, in this and maybe the next video, I'll talk about how Einstein's equation can Einstein's theory can actually be written down as an equation that can allow us to calculate quantitatively the observed um, the observed measurements. Now, in order to to um, uh, talk about this topic, it helps if we have some idea about the typical values of things like um, frequency and wavelengths of light in the, say, visible spectrum, as well as the work function of metals, the energy that's needed to remove electrons from a metal. Now, the numbers from this table I have um, obtained by searching for visible spectrum in Wikipedia. And what we have here in the first column are the numbers for the frequency of the various colors in terahertz. If you remember, tera, tera means 10 to the power of 12. And in the second column, what I have here are the wavelengths, or rather the, the range of wavelengths for the different for a few different colors. And these numbers are in nanometers. So this gives us an idea of the kind of values. Um, wavelength would be of the order of hundreds of nanometers. But we don't actually need to remember the exact values. You can always look it up or it might be given if you need to do a question on this. But it's always uh, good to have an idea so that we are familiar with um, the calculations. And for frequencies, it is of the order of hundreds of terahertz. Right. And the work function, have a look at the work function. The work function is the energy needed to remove an electron from a material. And we should add it is the minimum energy okay, because for example if you try to remove an electron perhaps from very deep in, in the body of the material you might need more energy so we are mainly interested in the energy needed to remove an electron from close to the surface in in uh, the photoelectric effects. So that's the work function. Now work function is is um, often represented by the Greek letter phi. This is, this is a Greek letter and is pronounced as phi in English. So and again it would be useful to have an idea of the typical values. I'll just write down some phi in EV right, for sodium sodium it's two point three eight for zinc it's three point six three to 4.9 and there is a range because work function actually depends on the nature of the surface of zinc and 
as as in the um, actual uh, arrangement of the atoms on the surface, and the actual arrangement of the atoms can be different depending on what angle you cut the the zinc metal. So the so um, I shan't go into those details. So for now, um, what we can see here is that at least for, for metals, the typical value is of the order of, of the work function is of, of the order of a few electron volts. A few electron volts. So and and this is the kind of energy um, that a photon has to has to give to the electrons in the metal in order to inject the electron from from a metal in, a, in, in the photoelectric effect. So with this um, with these ideas, with these numbers, uh, we are hopefully more familiar with the kind of values um, we need to use. Now let, let's now take a look at an example of how we might use Einstein's uh, theory to calculate photoelectric effects. So suppose that um, in in uh, the example that I want to look at, okay, let's say I draw my glass tube again and let's say I have a piece of sodium metal so that's a sodium metal and to remove an electron from the sodium metal you need to overcome have enough energy to overcome the work function and let's say the electron gets ejected with the velocity v so remember that we need this uh, amount of energy phi to overcome the work function and then there is the light coming in in the form of lots and lots of little photons and each photon has an energy of uh, right not written this down yet photon energy so Einstein's idea is that the photon's energy E is proportional to the frequency and the exact notation he proposed was E times H, where H is the Planck's constant. And the value for H Okay, let me write this down. The value for H is 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second that's the unit joule times second um, so that's the energy from the photon we have hf let's see and it comes in and the photon energy has to uh, be enough to overcome the work function energy needed to remove the electron from the surface from the attraction of the atoms and whatever that is left over whatever energy that's left would uh, go into the kinetic energy of the electrons half and v squared so that's the picture that's Einstein's picture of the photoelectric effect okay so now with this uh, qualitative uh, idea Einstein could then make an equation relating these three quantities it's really quite simple conservation of energy photon energy some used to overcome the work function whatever remains becomes the kinetic energy 
Okay, so there are different ways to write it. I can, for example, say that the photon energy must be equal to the well, it's converted into uh, is is used to overcome the work function, and uh, the remaining energy becomes the kinetic energy. So therefore, work function plus kinetic energy must be equal to the original photon energy. Or I can say that um, the photon energy is used to overcome the work function. So after that, the amount that is left, photon energy minus the work function is the remaining amount, must be equal to the kinetic energy. So that gives us one equation for the photoelectric effect. And the other relation which we need to relate this to measurement is that is, uh, is to relate the kinetic energy to the stopping potential. Now if you recall, the stopping potential is the voltage we need to apply is the negative voltage we need to apply here at this side in order to stop the electrons. All right. If I have a negative uh, pole here, negative plate here, the electrons will get repelled and it will slow down as it tries to approach. So as the electrons move towards the negative uh, charge. It has to do work against repulsion, and and that work must come from the kinetic energy. So if the this reverse this stopping potential is just enough to stop the electron, meaning that the electron as it does work, it slows down, it loses kinetic energy, and it just and it stops just when it reaches this plane. Okay, that's the situation if we have the stopping potential. We have just enough potential to stop it. So that means the electron just uses up all its kinetic energy uh, when it just re reaches this side. So this means that the work done by the kinetic energy, the work done by the kinetic energy, um, must be directly related to the stopping potential. Now, how, how are they related? Well, let, let's take a look at the definition for voltage. Voltage is charge over... Uh, no. Voltage is work done over charge. Okay, so that means that work done is charge times voltage. So since this, the, the work done, uh, the, the kinetic energy needs to do, do this work, the kinetic energy becomes the work that is used to do the work against the repulsion from the negative charges. And, and the work done is related to the charge by this formula, by the definition of the voltage, which is charge times the voltage. In, the, in our case, the charge is the charge of an electron, which is E, and the voltage is, um, we have called it the stopping potential, Vs. So, once we understand this, we can we can leave this part out. We can just leave, leave this part out, and we have this equation: half mv squared is equal to uh, e times v s. But there's another point uh, we need to add uh, in this equation, which is that the electrons, the electrons that get emitted by the photoelectric effect they need not all have the same kinetic energy. Ideally, we, we have described this situation in which photon uses up a certain amount of energy to overcome the work function, and then what remains go into the kinetic energy or the electron that absorbs the photon. Now that should still be correct, except that from the point where an electron absorbs a photon to the point where it comes out of the surface, it might actually have to go through some, um, you know, bouncing around, uh, knocking into other electrons and atoms. And when it 
does that, it would lose energy. Right? Maybe some electron some electrons that happen to be very close to the surface just pops out straight away with this exact amount of energy. But it is more likely likely that for the majority of the electrons, they would be somewhere, you know, inside the surface, sort of maybe a few layers of atoms in. And, and in order to come out, it might just have to knock its way out. Now, if that's the case, we would expect that the electron, the electron that has gained that amount of energy, would have lose a little bit of its kinetic energy. So that what whatever electrons that come out here and start traveling uh, through the vacuum should have a range of energy. Okay, some a bit more, some a bit less. And the um, if you like the ideal case is where the electron come out straight away without losing energy and then that would be exactly this amount. And and so there'll be electron uh, with this amount of energy, there would also be a lot of electrons with less energy than this. So in that sense, therefore, this value actually gives us the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons that are ejected. So there's a range of energy and this is the maximum. So therefore, we would um, often write Max next to the V for the kinetic energy. To remind ourselves that we are talking about the maximum kinetic energy. So this gives us two equations, this one and this one, for Einstein's theory on the photoelectric effects.